The line for line is really where you need to be A platform that's really made for folks like you and me You can find it all no matter what you seek Whether you calling or you listening, tune in every week Line for line Oh yeah, I'm going line for line all right, and just like that, we are back on Line for Line podcast, our exclusive segment, The Bears Report. Before we get started with this episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the notifications on so you get notified every time me and Lester go live for you guys. I got Lester in the building. Lester, how you doing? Doing good. How about you? I'm actually hanging in there today. How are you feeling today? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's, uh, it's, it's Christmas time, so it's always fun. Yes, sir. Are you ready for Christmas? No. What? <laughs> do, do you have all your shopping done at least? Uh I'm going to go shopping when I leave here, uh-huh. get a few little things. I'm um, seeing my daughter wants to go with me because uh, she, she may want to get a couple things too. So, but I don't know. The last I saw it was pretty busy, so I'm yeah. not sure if I'll go tonight. I might go late, 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 like a Meyer because 24 hours or something. Yeah, it's been busy everywhere. I just went to Walmart just to get two little things, yeah. and I was waiting for like 25 minutes for my like pickup order. I was like, man, this is crazy. But you know why we're here. We're here for the Bears report, man. Before we get started... <clears throat> How many more games can the Bears win this hectic season? <laughs> uh, I mean, if they don't win any of them and Justin Fields does some some nice stuff, I'm mm-hmm. cool with it. But I, I think they have a chance to beat the Giants. The Giants have Mike Lennon at quarterback. Mike Lennon is not the best quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they might get Seattle. I mean, Seattle's struggling too right now. I mean, of course, they have Russell Wilson, but, you know, that's that's a winnable game. What are they, 5-9 and nine now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's you know, they're, they're definitely out of it. They're guaranteed to lose in season. Then, of course, they finished with the Vikings, and we just saw what happened in the last Vikings game. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bears defense came to play, and, you know, who knows? I mean, the Vikings were up and down so much. So I would not be surprised if they win the next three. I would not be surprised if they lost the next three. <laughs> so, like I said, as long as Justin Fields, Tevin Jenkins, Larry Borum, Thomas Graham, let the young guys play and get things set up for next season. Yes, That's sir. all I want to see. I think the Bears fans, the biggest question that everyone has is, why does Matt Nagy still have a job? That's a good question. I mean, like, it was up to me. I'd have fired him last last year. You know, I just think that coming off the, the season he had last year was probably the, the right time to let him go. Mm-hmm. You know, they had their, their collaboration meetings forever, and they brought the whole, the whole gang back for one more try. And, you know, it's – they had to have a lot go right this year. It started off with Justin Fields getting him. That, that, that was a good, good plus there, but – just went downhill, you know. They couldn't, uh, they c- couldn't keep nothing going. They couldn't keep it any consistent. His offensive scheme is just not that good. You yeah. know, it's just it, that's what it boils down to. I mean, it's he's come from the the Andy Reid coaching tree, which is very successful, but he just can't. It, it, he can't do what Andy Reid does. Mm-hmm. You know, the apple falls very far from the tree in this case, <laughs> and uh, it's just you know he just you know I mean he'll be fine. I mean when the when he, when he's fired he's fine. Mm-hmm. He'll be a quarterback coach somewhere or or you know a consultant somewhere. He'll be okay, but he's not going to be uh, be calling plays. It's, okay, now will we still have Ryan Pace? That's a big question. There's been so much back and forth buzz the last couple of weeks. You know, d- different different analysts, different insiders. They've had some some takes on it, and again, fifty fifty. You know, yeah. I mean, if you if you would have asked me last week, I would have said probably gone. And now this week, I'm thinking maybe he he stays. You know, there's some talk that you know that maybe they push him to a different job. You mm-hmm. know, because they like him in, in House Hall. I mean, they really value what he's brought to the organization. You know, he was involved in the big House Hall renovation. You know, he was behind that. I mean, that's a that's a nice facility now up there. You know, I'm sure he may be involved in the in the uh, the new stadium projects. So maybe they want to keep him around for that. But as far as free agency, you know, his drafts are okay. But you know, I don't like how he he, he doesn't value his draft picks. He trades up too much. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if you're gonna if you only have five picks and you trade everything up, you know, it's like you're, you're shorting yourself. You know, the, the odds are hitting on on good players are better the more picks you have. And he doesn't look at it that way. He looks at it, he gets conviction, he wants his guy, he go get him, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And and that, that's bit him sometimes. Yes, sir. What about that guy, Bill Lazor? I see that he's coming back from protocols as well, too. Do you feel like he'll be back calling plays or no? Matt Nagy might stay just because Matt Nagy. I mean, you know, it's Matt Nagy. It's what he does. He, he's... You know, he's really wishy-washy with things, and you know, I mean, you can kind of see in the last game it just there wasn't the same rhythm. Like, like we said before, Bill Lazor, I'm not a fan of him either. He, what? He's okay. <laughs> he's just a guy. I mean, you know, he 
he's nothing special. You yeah. know, I mean, he calls it an okay game, but he's got his issues too. So as far as who calls plays this week, I don't know. Nice. Oh, so you don't you don't know if it'll be him or not? <laughs> I'm I'm guessing it'll be Nagy uh-huh. just because he got a little taste of it again this mm-hmm. last week. You yeah. know, and so maybe he'll 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 do it again, but the right thing to do is give it back to Laser because yes, you know you, you shouldn't lose your job because you got sick. You know, mm-hmm. so that's the right thing to do. But we've seen Nagy in the past kind of be you and do his own thing. So. Yeah, but a, a question that I was thinking of on the way here: obviously, you got the head coach and offensive coordinator calling the plays. But how much of it would you say is on them when the Bears still aren't moving the ball down the field? Like, what would you say is the reason that they're not moving the ball down the field, not putting up points? As I was telling my friend yesterday, this is a new NFL where almost every offense is a high octane offense where you have to put up twenty eight to thirty yeah. plus points to win a football game, and the Bears just aren't doing that. How much of it is on the actual offense, and how much is of it is on the actual play callers? Yeah, I mean the players, you know, they have an onus there too. They have to they have to make plays, and you know they they seem like there's always a bad penalty. Like mm-hmm. the Bears are rolling, and then all of a sudden it's it's first down, and they get a penalty. Now it's first and fifteen, or or they make a nice play, and then there's a, a pass interference, so they got you know it gets called back. So, mm-hmm. you know, the players got to make plays, but you know the, these these coaches haven't really put the the players in the best position to succeed. You know, and then you mentioned the scoring. This is three years now. The Bears have been one of the the, the worst scoring teams in in the NFL, and it's like, you know, I mean, and then even even the the the. Uh, uh, 2018 when they made the playoffs at 12 and 4 they were only like 20th in scoring so they weren't still scoring points there their defense had like six six touchdowns that year so mm-hmm. that helped them out a lot it's just not a functional offense and you know that ultimately falls on Matt Nagy mm-hmm. so obviously you see some big changes coming got to be i mean they they got to have a whole new coaching staff i mean it has to happen I wouldn't be surprised if it happens after the Seattle game because the, the the new window where you can actually talk to and interview a prospective coaches the last two weeks of the year. That's mm-hmm. brand new this year. Before, you had to wait till the season ended. But now, if you get permission from the, a team, you can talk to their coordinator or their or their assistant to become your new head coach. Uh, I believe it's a... A two-hour Zoom meeting you're allowed, so nice. so it's, it's not it's not the it's not a formal interview, but it's a nice interview to kind of you know meet, you know kind of see where they are as as a coach, kind of get the philosophy down, kind of meet them on a personal level, and then set the seeds for once the season ends. Now, okay, we already talked to four or five guys. We really like these two. Let's zero on those on those guys now when the season's over. So I hope they take advantage of the new rule. But again, man, it's the Bears. So, yes, you know, they may just say, ah, let's keep Maggie till the end of the year. <laughs> Get know. that clown out of there. Now give us your top couple of people that you see will be the perfect candidate for that job. You know, I like I like I like Leftwich. You know, I like uh Dable. I like Roman. A lot of the 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 like coordinators now that that are getting all the buzz. I mean, I like all those guys. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Kellen Moore in Dallas, you know, it's again when it, when you when you talk about getting an assistant. Now you got to think about okay, can he be a leader? Because it's one thing to have a good offensive mind; you have to also be able to lead men, and you know that's why you know a guy like Jim Harbaugh has done it before. You know he's head coach before in the NFL before; he's had success everywhere he's gone. I wouldn't be mad if they hired Jim Harbaugh. Um, if they go college again, maybe Ohio State's Ryan Day. Uh, he coached Justin Fields last year. You know maybe they bring Ryan Day in and, and offer him a lot of money, but. You know, it's it's a hard move for those guys coming from college to the pros because especially with like with Harbaugh, like if, if he wins in his next couple of games, you know, you know they may just give him like a brand new contract, you know, even more money. Mm-hmm. So I mean, how much the Bears going to go? I mean, they they got to make a splash at at some point, but it's hard to say. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that I'd be fine with. I'd be fine with a guy on defense too, a guy like Todd Bowles coming coming back. He's, okay. he's done it before. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he has the the leadership thing down. I think he understands that. Uh, maybe Dave Tobe, special teams coach, been in Chicago before. Another guy that kind of has the leadership skills down, understands that aspect of it. Yeah. But y- you got to – it's all about Justin Fields. Y- whoever you bring in, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, what's your plan to develop this guy? Because he's got the skills. Now we got to develop him and, and, and make him be the guy we believe he was when we traded up to draft him. Uh, that literally was just going to ask you that. That's so crazy that you said that. Does Justin Fields have that it factor about yeah. him that makes you think he's going to have a good tenure in the NFL? I, I think he does. I mean, I liked him in college coming out. You know, 
I expected him to struggle. You know, I didn't expect him to come out and be like Deshaun Watson was, you know, his first year or, or Justin Herbert was his first year. You know, those guys that come out and play great from the start, those are rare. Mm-hmm. You know, most guys struggle. You know, uh, the uh, both Manning struggled. You know what I mean? Most <laughs> guys struggle. Uh, Pat, uh, Pat Mahomes didn't play his first year, you mm-hmm. know, and then most guys either struggle or they or they brought along slowly. When you're when you're thrown in the fire right away, I expect struggles. And he's flashed. I mean, he's flashed. You know, if you look, just look at the stats. You know, they're not the best. But you look at some of like the the analytic stats, like some of the the next gen stats, and you're like, wow, he's like his his big time throw percentage. You know, his his yards per attempt. You know, stuff like this. You know, his ability to go downfield. You know, there there are things you look at and you say, okay. I see the pieces. Now let's put it all together because right now he struggles. He mm-hmm. takes too many sacks, holds on to the ball a little bit too much long, too long. The fumbles, he leads the league in fumbles. So yeah. he's got to clean some stuff up, but, you know, the skills are there. I keep telling people this <clears throat> all the time. It's just so hard when you come to Chicago. Like, Chicago has never been known for its quarterback. They've never been known for a coaching staff who can produce a quarterback as well, too. Offensive line has been in shambles for how long? And then now you get this guy who's just like the shining star of the future. But then it's like you just throwing him in the dirt yeah. anyway. So it's like, how is he supposed excuse me, how is he supposed to succeed in a situation like that? But then now it's to the point where, okay, you brought him in this year. Matt Nagy may leave, may not leave. Now he's, a, now he's gonna come in with another guy yeah. who has now he has to get the feel for them, learn a whole new offense. How much of that do you think will hinder his career second year? I mean, it's it's that's always a risk you have to you have to run if you bring a new guy in. But you know, like Justin Herbert in, in, with the Chargers, you know, he's on his second corner in two years and he's doing okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if the talent's there, if your football IQ is high, you'll be fine. You'll thrive. You know, some guys, you know, some guys just don't have it. You know, like if you look at a guy like Mitch Trubisky, who I liked, I thought it was he was an okay pick. He wasn't my top choice at the time, but I thought he would be fine and. You know, he just wasn't – when you go back and look at the All-22 film, there's just so many plays he's missing. Mm-hmm. He wasn't helped by Matt Nagy at all. He, yeah. he didn't use him right. I mean, he should have really scaled things back, kind of, you know, let him run a more, more basic thing. But he wanted the – Matt Nagy wanted to do Matt Nagy stuff. <laughs> That's what he wanted to do. And yeah. and we see it now with Fields. You know, like, why is Justin Fields dropping back straight back? Yeah. You know, this kid should be rolling out more. He should be having more bootlegs, more play action. But Matt Nagy wants to run the Matt Nagy system, not the system that helps the Chicago Bears. Yeah, and usually people draft the team and they build around their quarterback. Like, look what they did for Lamar Jackson out there in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. They built around that kid, you yeah. know? Like, can you see the Bears trying to do that? Well, that's that's like their, 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 their OC is Greg Roman, who mm-hmm. he's shown that he's been able to build an offense around a particular quarterback. And, you know— Lamar Jackson and Just Fields are they're, they're separate. With you know, they're, they're both good athletes, but you know they played a different style. But if they hire a guy like Greg Roman, I think he understands the running game. He understands the play action game. He understands he can do some stuff out of pistol. Uh, he kind of have some more more modern aspects mm-hmm. of the offense and be successful while utilizing his talents of, yes, of his of his players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, we got to talk about the star. Tevin Jenkins, just tell us a little bit about what you've seen from him and what are you liking about this kid so far. Yeah, he he had a rough debut, uh, four penalties against, against the, the Packers. Packers. You know, uh, he had some up and down play, but I actually graded his the film from his last game, and and I had him at a, at a a ninety percent, I believe it was. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was just a again, he had three penalties. Uh, one of them was the unnecessary roughness when he when he when he went after the guy for for hit, hitting fields out of bounds. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that kind of penalty. You know, I'm an, I'm an, protect your guy. Yeah, at all protect costs. your guy. That's fine with me. Um, but but on the field, I mean, he improved from one one week to the next. That's all you can ask for. He was a bit sloppy in his pass sets the first week. You know, his hand usage was all over the place. Yeah. You know, he was getting beat around the edge because he wasn't getting his his outside hand up. This week, I watched the film. It improved. Whether it was him on his own, his the coaching he got, whatever it was, it, it sunk in because he looked. I mean, he looked like. A guy that I mean, again, one game. Let's not get too fired up, but that one game against a pretty good pass rushing Viking team, they were leading the league in sacks. He did pretty good. Yeah, but what are you feeling about the the overall development of the offensive line as well? They're I, looking pretty decent to me. Yeah, they have their moments. You know, I'd love to see uh, Larry Borm come back. You know, 
I'm not as high on Borum as, as a lot of fans. Some fans think he's like the second coming. He's going to be like a stud. Yeah. He, he's you don't okay. think so? I mean, he's good. I mean, he, he's okay. He's got a lot of promise, but I want to see more. Yeah. I mean, he, he doesn't really have, you know, he seems to be, he needs to be a little stronger at the point of attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has pretty good feats. He's a pretty decent uh, in, in pass pro. You know, he cut a bunch of weight in the offseason. I think he dropped like 40, 50 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, he was like playing at, at, at uh, what college did he go to? Missouri. He was like 380 ish. You know, and he now he's like th- three, you know, three thirty ish. I mean, he, he cut a bunch of weight. He, I mean, if you watch his film in college, he was just a big man. Like he would, <laughs> he would, he would, he would just engulf. Just, you know, it was just how big he was, and you know. So then you're like, well, was that his physical strength, or was it just because he was just a big dude? Yeah. So I think he just was a big dude. Why he, why he just mauled guys in college, cut some weight. Let's get in the off season. This, you know, in in in, in the weight room this off season, build that up, and I think it'll be fine, but. You know, some Bears fans thinking, you know, he's he's going to be the, the right tackle for the next 20 years. And it's like, let's, yeah, you know. That is a lot of talk. I see it all wait. over Twitter, let's too. wait. Yeah. yeah. So we have to wait on Tevin Jenkins as well, too, you know. I mean, he has a higher pedigree. I mean, he came in with, you know, a first-round grade. He went to the second round, obviously. But, you know, he has a higher ceiling, mm-hmm. and, and his college tape was much better. So I think, you know, I'm more excited from what I saw from Jenkins because I know the ceiling is higher. Mm-hmm. Borum, you know – like if, if best Borum ever is is a swing tackle, that's a good draft pick. Yeah, you know fifth round pick. He came in. You know he's able to play on the line for the next you know a few years. Play right, play left, maybe some guard. You know expect him to be a starter where he was drafted as a rookie. If he can keep this up, another great pick by Ryan Pace. Yes, sir. And obviously people fall asleep on like Ryan Pace does have some good picks. You know, like I think it's just like the picks that he's missed on. Is what hinders him the most. Yeah, I mean the quarterback Trisky's the, the worst. You know, I mean, why do people say oh. Kevin White? I mean, that was a bad one, but you know that was his first draft, so you kind of give him a pass on that. Yeah, you know, but like, like, but then you know, trading up for for I like Montgomery, but trading up for him, you know, I don't think you need to trade up for him. He traded up to make sure he got him. Yeah, you know, he, like like we talked about, he has conviction in his guys. He does whatever it takes to trade up and get him. With a quarterback like. Justin Fields or even Mitch, you know, if, if that's the case, hey, you got to get your guy. But sometimes let the board come to you, mm-hmm. you know, let things play out. That's what the the really smart organizations do. They, they don't they don't panic, you know. And sometimes I think Ryan Pace panics the same way he panics in free agency where he overpays guys. Where it's like, man, let the market come to you. Don't offer Jimmy Graham two years, you know, twenty million dollars. Yeah, you know, <laughs> wait a minute, take a breath. See if he has some offers, then come back with an offer to him. But you know that's that's another reason why I think Ryan Pace is probably going to be gone. But again, oh who, know, who knows? Yeah. Speaking of David Montgomery, what do you see? Do you see them bringing him back next year? Yeah, I mean it's, he has one more year in the deal. So oh that, yeah, he does. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that'll be his fourth year. Um, but you know that's when you start talking to extension. So you know a lot of times you see running backs if they aren't extended, sometimes they you know. I'm not going to say he's the kind of guy that will pout through through things, but, you know, they want to know what's going to happen with the future. And if the Bears say, hey, we're not going to offer you a deal, let's wait and see what happens, play it out, maybe franchise tag on the table or or wait till the season ends and, you know, uh, set your market for us. You know, maybe he doesn't like that, but but he seems like a hardworking kid. He seems like he has a good, a good hand on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. I think he'll be fine. I don't see the Bears offering him too much money. I, I don't know. It's, it's all about the new regime, you know, some regimes just don't value running backs at all. Some overvalue them. It's hard to say because the league's trending towards you know not paying those guys. And we yeah. see, we see some guys get big money, and then they you know they can't live up to that contract because you know the wear and tear in the body. You see in Dallas with Zeke, you know he's he's gotten a lot of money, but he's is he getting outplayed by Pollard right now? Yeah. So it's like, and that guy's you know he's not making no money. So why pay a guy when you can get a guy like Pollard to come in and do a job? Or in the Bears case. Khalil Herbert, now you drafted, looks pretty good. No one good expected job. him to look that no, good. No, Everyone no. thought he was just going to be like a special teams guy. Yep. But then obviously cer- certain stuff happened. Then uh, next thing you know, he's looking good, you know? And it was crazy, too, because like when David Montgomery was back, they are like, oh, no, what's going to happen with the carries now? You know, because it's like you wouldn't even see Khalil Herbert at all at first, like when David Montgomery came back as well, too. So it's like, what are you going to do with that? I mean, if it was me, I would split it more than they are. I mean, they're kind of going more towards Montgomery. I just think Herbert showed he deserved it, but maybe it comes down to they don't they don't trust him as much in pass protection mm-hmm. and they don't trust him as much in the passing game. Uh, David Montgomery they understand, they understand he knows the full playbook. He knows where the blitz comes from. He knows where the where the, where the guys where he has to go. He knows when his option routes are. You know he knows all of that. 
so they trust him more, whereas Herbert's a rookie. So I think we'll see Herbert have a nice year next season. Yes, sir. Now let's switch side to the defensive side of the ball. What can you see happening with Akeem Hicks? Do you think they extend him, or do you think he's gone? I think he's gone. It, 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 it sucks. He's one of my favorite players. You know, heart and soul of that defense. But, you know, he's, he's, he's on the wrong side of 30, as they say. You know, he's, he's had some injuries in the past. And I was actually talking about this on, on my podcast. Is, is he injury prone because he has a couple of injuries in the last couple of years? Because before that, he was fine. He never mm-hmm. was hurt. This year, it's uh, groin. It's ankle. So, you know, is that injury prone from age or what? Last year, it was a dislocated elbow. You can't say he's injury prone because some guy's helmet hit him in the right spot and it just popped his elbow out of place. Yeah. That's not injury prone. That's bad luck. So I don't know. I just think he'll get more money on the open market if it gets to that point. He, he says he loves Chicago. So you think he'll take a pay cut to stay? Maybe he'll take a pay cut. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, it's his, this is his livelihood. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bears will be struggling again next year. They're not going to be a, a contender. You know, next so, year, you don't think? I mean, you know, I mean, if everything goes perfect, they should be better. But they're not going to be like, you know, come on, the man. Buffalo now you're Bills. breaking me down. I mean, you know, come on. They're not going to be the Packers. Come on. You know, they're not going to be like going for a, a title. What? So if you're Akeem Hicks and you know, okay, I'm, I'm in my 30s, do I come back to a team I love or do I go try and chase a ring somewhere? Maybe he goes chase a ring somewhere. Oh, my God. Now you're making me all I sad know, saying I the Bears know. are going to be up there. Okay. So now we're still speaking on the defensive side of the ball. What did you think of Thomas Graham? Man. And why did it take so long for for them to give the kid a shot, knowing you only had Jalen Johnson at corner outside of whatever else you had? You know, he was bad in camp. Mm-hmm. He wasn't very good at all. And, and he actually opted out of his, his, his last year in college because of COVID. So he didn't play all of 2020. So he may have been rusty. Mm-hmm. He may have not been in the best of football shape coming in. I mean, that's a cornerback. You need to you know have your win. You need to have, your, have everything going the right. And he didn't look very good in camp. You know, he was he had a pick in preseason, but overall he wasn't that good in preseason. And the Bears cut him. Yeah. And not one of the team decided to sign him. He <laughs> made it through waivers. The Bears brought him back to the practice squad. Every
You calling or you listening, tune in every week. Lifeline. Oh, yeah, I'm going lifeline.